Hey everyone, this is Axfield here and with today's video I'm going to list you 10 essential tips that you can use within the game of Ostrov. Now Ostrov is a lovely city building game with some pretty complex game mechanics so it can take quite some time to figure it all out. Now with these tips I believe it will give you a much more smoother gameplay and it will just help you to grow quicker throughout the game. Now the first tip that I want to give you is to set up your trading post as soon as possible. Just do make sure that you do have enough workers to assign at the trading post. You need at least two workers, one to assign as a manager and one to assign as a worker. Now what you can also do is you can assign two items that you can trade there which I would say um, the charcoal and the sunflower oil is the best two commodities to start trading with in the initial stages of the game. Now your money do run out quite quickly if you don't have any items to trade with so you want to make sure that the trading post is up and running so that you can immediately start trading away because with the taxes that you earn in the game you do not make enough money to count away your expenses so that's why it's a good idea to just set your trading post up as soon as possible secondly you also want your town hall to be built relatively early within the game because once you've got your town hall you can do two uh, special things within the town hall so the one thing is you can ad adjust your taxes and secondly you can appoint a counselor which will then allow you to do seasonal hiring and it does help for certain buildings like for example for the fisheries where you can't do anything while the lakes are frozen or the rivers are frozen over so then you can uh, unassign them from the fisheries tell them not to work over the winter time and then they can be used as laborers in different parts of the town so that's why it's also important to get the tunnel up and running because you do need to adjust your taxes quite significantly to to get it all balanced now i do have a link attached on the screen you should find it where i explain how you can tweak your taxes to make everything balance out labor force can be managed through numbers and pay in each production building exclusively so what i mean by that is you can for example select your smithy and then you can adjust the amount of laborers that you want to assign to work uh, for the smithy if you for example only want five laborers you can bring the amount down to five and you can also push it up to 20 if you so wish now if it is a high priority for you to get workers at the smithy you can increase the laborers pay um, by just increasing the wage percentage and then that will increase the likelihood of them doing the job at the smithy first so if it is a high priority job then you can just increase the amount of laborers that you want to assign and you can also then increase the wages and then they will prioritize that work first clothes warm clothes and shoes should be imported at latest on the fourth year of your town running so there is a certain time where people's clothes start wearing out as well as the shoes and once that happens they start to complain and get upset up to the point where they can leave your town now if they do decide to leave your town because you didn't supply them with any clothes or shoes um, it can give you quite a headache losing those villages and then getting the new ones in again so to avoid that just make sure to import the clothes warm clothes or shoes at latest by the fourth year and then also to sell them at the marketplace or at your market stalls uh, that's pretty important so that they will always be supplied with what they need and then ideally you also want to get your produ own production going for the clothes and shoes as early as you can because it does cost you a lot to import all of that Artists cannot be assigned to the cart parking only to the cart shed so this is something that i learned at a much later stage of my gameplay but it is pretty important to have the cart sheds so that you can assign the carters and then what the carters do is they can transport much heavier stuff so if you need to transport bulk stuff you can assign carters at that specific production building for example like the brickworks where you do take large quantities and you can assign the carter specifically for that production building now the difference between the cart shed and the cart parking is is that the laborers use the cart parking and then the carters use the cart shed so both of them do have their own advantage uh, I would say in the beginning stages of the game the cart parking is quite convenient and while you've got a lot of free laborers that you can use but once you've got a bigger population where you can assign villagers to 
the card shed exclusively then I would say it's a good idea to get that then. Tip number six is a pretty big one and I think it's something that everybody should apply with in their game. But you've got to prioritize the jobs between men and women. So at the beginning stages of the game when the labor force is still on the low side you want to make sure that you use every villager that you can to do a job. Now there's many jobs that they you can assign both men and women but then also there's almost an equal amount of jobs where you can only assign men so you want to make sure if there is a job where you can assign both men and women that you only tick the box at the higher options to allow women to work at those specific buildings for example the thatchery and the market stalls and then the men you want to then appoint for example at the forestry or the brickworks because like i said you when your labor force is low you want to make sure that you utilize every villager that you can within the town at an appointed role. Number seven, residential buildings should not be too far away from your workplace. Now this is something that you only learn at a much later stage of the game when your town has grown uh, a lot bigger. So if the workers houses are too far from the workplace they will just simply not go to the working area because it will take too long for them to do the job. So when you've got farms out on the outskirts of the town, just make sure you've got a few residential homes not too far from there so that they can reach the farms and so that they can do the work that they need to. So that's a pretty important one when your city starts expanding is that's always keeping residential homes not too far from your production buildings. Ideally, you should only use platforms to supply water to your animal husbandries. Now, this is something that can also become a problem if your town starts running out of water. It's like a perpetual problem and it can cause pretty much your whole town uh, population to emigrate if you don't supply them with enough water. So, what I would suggest is that you get enough wells for the town itself, but then you also build a few platforms on the rivers and the lakes. Uh, not too far from the farms or the animal husbandries so that they can then utilize the platforms so you've got to tick this in your options that you've got with each working building that they will only use the platforms to collect the water water trade is impossible from november to march so if you do decide to do any trade via the water then do make sure that you'd get all the trade down by latest october so you can then carry on trading after march but between that time, between November and March, you want to try and avoid any river trading uh, as far as you can. Because once you've got a trade that you want to do, let's say for example at the end of October, as soon as November hit, they will simply not come to your town to do the trade. So just do make sure that you get your timing done with the water trade. Workers at the cow shed and the sheep farms help to put grass on the hay dryers. Now, this is something that I also learned on a much later stage, but you see, you only really need one worker at a cow shed or sheep farm to do all the work and to get the milk and all the products and ingredients that you need from the cows and the sheep. But once you appoint additional workers to the cow shed or sheep farms, they will then go out of the way to fill any hay dryer that they can find. They will fill it with grass and then that will give you the feed that you're eventually going to use for the, the cows, the sheep, as well as the horses. So it's a good idea to, from the start, to appoint at least two workers with every cow shed and sheep farm that you've got. But those are my 10 essential tips that I would say for Ostriff. There are many other tips that I can think of now, just off the bat, but these 10 are pretty good and it helped me tremendously within my game. So I do hope that it helps you also. And if it did help you, please do remember to hit the subscribe as well as the bell notification. I do general game tip, game guide, game news videos, and playthroughs of city builders, builders, crafting, and survival games. So if that's what you like, then this is the channel for you. But thank you so much for listening in, and then I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.